Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's Monday episode of Lanker at the Mic. We're going to do something a little different today because we're going to do a fitness-related episode. If you want to see my preview show for Cowboys versus Cardinals on Monday Night Football tonight, you could check that out. I posted that yesterday. And also a reminder, we're now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And today, we have a very special guest with us. We are joined by personal trainer, Israel Army veteran, and founder of Live Off Fitness, we are joined by Noam Gorelick. How are you today, Noam? Hey, man. How are you guys doing? How's everything? We are fantastic. Um, but yeah, just first off, look, Ontario literally just got locked down today uh, for the yeah. next 28 days. Uh, so yeah. right off the bat, for, how are you? How is, how's your family? How are you coping with, uh, with this, uh, with the, at the start of this lockdown so far? Yeah. So when, when gyms started to reopen, I finally got to go back to my gym. Everything was good. There were no issues. Had that for about a month and then now we're already closed. So my last shift was Saturday and I'm not probably not going to get another shift for the next 28 days. So that's already a bummer on my end. Um, but everyone's healthy. Thank God. Nobody's hurt. Nobody's uh, sick. Everyone's healthy with their significant others. And I myself am OK. I hope you're OK and healthy, Mike, as well. But other than that, everything's great um, on that end. But it's a bit tough with COVID right now, as you know. Of course. And yeah, thank God everything's well with uh, with us here and um, and my family. So that's what's most important at the end of the day. But um, just so let's talk right now. You So you're, are you going to still train your clients online or are you going to hold off training them for the next 28 days? How are you going to go about that? Yeah. So ever since COVID really happened, I'll talk to you from the beginning since March. Um, a lot of my clients did want to leave for a little bit. So what I did quickly to convert them instead of them just letting just letting go, I said, hey, I'm down to do some virtual like just like you and I are doing virtual sessions. And most of them said yes, which is amazing. And a couple of them who are a bit older clients didn't really feel comfortable with the whole set of being on a computer and a webcam as well as they don't even have the equipment necessary. So it's a bit tough for them. So I had to like remove some clients. So I did lose 60% of my business at the end of the day, which sucks. But uh, at the same time, I'm still able to train people virtually. So like you said, I am training people virtually and it's, it's easier than usual. Yeah. And what about training people outside? Do you ever, um, because I find like some of my clients, that's what I've been doing is training people outside. Have you uh, been able to do that as well or uh, more just relying on the online and virtual sessions? So a lot of the time it's just virtual and online. Like there's not a lot of clients that I have that are willing to do it outside because at the same time they they're still working and I'm still working and I, they don't want me to go all the way to them or they don't want to come all the way here just because of their, you know, skepticism about COVID and worry, worrisome and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So, no, of course. I mean, um, yeah, so just like online right now is definitely the way to go, but also, and especially with the weather getting bad, like, yeah, it's, it's tough, but you know, if you have, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later in our show today, but um, I want to go back to you and really talk about, uh, you know, your experience in the, in the Tzava, the Israeli army, right. Um, and, you know, becoming a personal trainer and starting your own personal training business, Live Off Fitness, by the way, you can follow him at Live Off at Live Off Fitness on Instagram. You could like his page on Facebook as well. But I want to ask you, um, what was your inspiration to start your career in fitness? Um, so my inspiration to starting my career in fitness was actually when I was actually really young. Um, I just started like realizing that I can do a lot of runs and I'm a long distance runner. And then I started realizing that I'm very lightweight so I could do a bunch of pull-ups. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is so cool. I can do these things. Um, you know, some people are like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed to do these things. I'm weak, I'm, I'm, I'm scrawny, I'm, you know, all that fun stuff. And I was like that when I was first uh, starting to work out. Um, and then I started noticing that I can go to the gym, started doing a lot of push-ups, body weight exercises from there. Once I got stronger and stronger, I started increasing it to, weights and heavier weights and then from there I started helping my friends a lot of my friends who uh, might have been overweight or underweight um, wanted some help and what I did was I just brought them into the gym and we started training together they fell in love with it I noticed that I'm actually capable of teaching people and helping them lose weight or gain muscle or whatever that might be and then I just once I, I believe I was 18 I was like you know what I want to get myself a license and actually be professional about it and uh, ever since then, I've been doing personal training for five plus years. I've had many clients and I've actually created my own studio, made my own website, liveofffitness.com. 
um, and you can literally just sign up and get free routines, especially during COVID actually. Um, and uh, that's my journey. I just fell in love with it and I, I love helping people. And uh, that's why I started fitness. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. I mean, I feel like that's also, we all have our own, like, really unique stories in terms of what inspires us to, to, you know, to train people to be active and, and, you know, and change their lives, of course. But you were also, you know, I want to really highlight the fact that you were also in the Tzava and that you served in the Israeli army for, was it two years, three years? Yeah, so usually when you're in the, in the military for Israel specifically, you have to be there serving for at least three years. Um, but as a lone soldier, as a volunteer, as, as a Canadian, um, I went there voluntarily. And as a volunteer, you have the option to do a year and a half uh, minimum. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, I wanted to do more, but uh, I know I have to respect the family and they wanted me to come back a bit earlier. So uh, doing that one and a, a year and a half, there was a bit of, a, of, of like, you know, complications here and there. So I ended up leaving after a year and coming back to take care of the family. Uh, Mike, you know that, you know about that situation. Uh, we can talk about that on later, you know, episodes here and there. Um, but uh, other than that, it was a great experience. It was a dream of mine ever since I was a young boy. I moved to Canada in 2001 when I was five years old. And uh, my dad always talked to me about it. My family always talked to me about it. And I actually just like, it was a, it was a dream of mine. And when I finished high school, the first thing I did was sign up for the military, went to Israel, did my service, did the Givati Brigade. Um, the best definition I can give in English is the Israeli Desert Marines. Um, and so it's not actually the Marines, but it's like Desert Marines. Um, so that was a great experience. My favorite, memorable, my most memorable part of that actually, I'll be honest with you, was um, me actually gaining the confidence to be, um, a shooter so in the beginning i was it was really tough for me like i was always missing i was always failing i wouldn't be confident in myself i wouldn't be shooting well and like i would feel like my my classmates or my or my uh, my commanders would be like okay this kid like needs to get together or you know <laughs> we might not be able to trust him in, a, in an emergency so um as the month went by I literally like increased my aim and I was happy and I was, I was like actually the top 10 shooter at, at the, in that month. And I was like, holy, like, this is amazing. Um, and people were motivating me and uh, all that stuff. Right. So. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, um, and, and is that, I know a lot of stuff is classified. Thank you so much, obviously for, for sharing, you know, that part of your experience, but what, what would you say you valued the most during your time in the, uh, in the Tzava? Mm. I always tell this to people, everything's in your head. I'll be honest with you. Uh, a lot of the time people, it's rough for people. There's situations where you mentally can't take it. You mentally break down um, and uh, you just need to be strong. Uh, and the whole point is, is if you believe in yourself mentally, uh, you will achieve anything you want in life. Um, so whether that be physical, uh, mental, school wise, fitness wise, uh, whatever that may be, I'll be honest with you. It's all in your head. Believe in yourself. Tell yourself that you'll succeed and you will absolutely succeed no matter what. So that's uh, that's fantastic advice. And I'm guessing that's definitely something that you can use, you know, from the military and translate that to your your message that you convey to your clients and whoever you're training. Am I, is that what you say? It's the most like the most translatable message from the military to your clients and working in fitness. Yeah, a lot of the time my clients are struggling. And for example, if they're doing like their 14th or 15th rep in their, their second or third set, you know, I'll be like, hey guys, you can do this, keep pushing, don't give up. Like it's on your head, remember how strong you are. And what I also do to, to hype them up before I even tell them it's on your head, I tell them before you start your set or before you start your run or whatever it is, take a deep breath, close your eyes, mentally prepare yourself and tell yourself, okay, I got this, Mike. I got this, Mike. I'm going to kill this exercise. I'm going to kill this run. And then once that's happening, you're, you're in focus mode and you're just like, you won't stop. So that's the one thing that actually helps a lot of my clients, to be honest with you. 
Mm-hmm. And, and not just with fitness, but also like anything in life, like whether it's, you know, something work related, something, you know, social life or relationship related, like that's, you know, you can apply that anywhere. And believe me, it's much easier said than done. But it's it's something that, you know, if you train yourself, if you train yourself to really think like that, it goes 100% a long way. Um, and with that being said, now, um, you know, because a lot of people listening here, obviously, you know, we want to try to help, you know, as two fitness professionals here, we want to try to help people. People, both physically and mentally be able to get through this second wave and the second lockdown of COVID-19. So, so what would you say is um, in, t- in terms of like, what would, what would your message be in terms of like just staying active and staying um, with a routine from a fitness standpoint and a, also a mental health standpoint, what's your advice to your clients or anyone that's listening with this uh, second wave coming about right now? Yeah. So I'm going to start with what you asked me lastly, how to, be okay mentally with relation to fitness and COVID-19 and staying mentally strong. Um, you'll hear this a lot from <laughs> sergeants or military or whatever that is, but it's, it, it legit works. Uh, just the first thing you do, wake up in the morning, have a sip of water or like a cup of water, whatever it might be. And then why as you get up, just make your bed. You probably hear this so many times, just make your bed. Okay make your bed, that's going to be a great start for you because then you know you're going to have a productive day. Once that's done, go to the washroom, wash your face, do what you got to do, your routine, and just look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm going to have a good productive day. From there, it helps, it wakes you up, makes you feel more confident in yourself. And then the first thing I do, my dad would do this every single day when he wakes up, and I know you do it too, Mike, you stretch right in the morning, just give yourself a nice stretch. It's going to literally wake up your whole body. Your brain's going to start being active. And it's one of the best ways to get you guys to be mentally stronger every single day. And when it comes to working out, especially with stage two coming back in Ontario, in Toronto, uh, in Canada right now, um, the best bet I would say is just do a bunch of body weight exercises. So that's best bet, uh, skipping rope, uh, burpees, push-ups, um, j- jumping jacks. If you can do pull-ups, go for it. With relation to push-ups, if you can't do them, you can do a modified push-up. Uh, just do little runs here and there. Um, side planks. Practice your planking. Uh, do like um, multi-muscle group exercise, like squats with uh, shoulder press, and while you're while you're lifting yourself up, you know, there's so many different things you can do. And at the same time, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a, of a, of a promotion for everyone here. This is all free. All you got to do is you can go on liveofffitness.com, just sign up and you have a bunch of free routines you can work on. And most of them are body weight routines. So you can do them at home no matter what. So it's all free. All you got to do is just sign up liveofffitness.com. Okay. Um, so that could be helpful if you guys have no idea what you guys want to do, you know, so those are the best bets. And I know Mike is a, as a personal trainer, he's all over Instagram. He's all over YouTube. He's all over everything. So he always promotes all that stuff and tells you guys what to do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, well here's two, th- I, I have two things that I want to uh, address based on everything you said there. So number one, um, I'll be honest, I don't stretch every morning. That's not something that I do. Um, my flexibility is, I'd say one of my biggest uh, weaknesses from a physical health standpoint, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, okay. But what I do do, what I do do every day is, um, as I suggest, you make a plan for yourself every single day, whether it's uh, uh, like a busy, like, you know, full day, we wake up at seven or, or 8 a.m. and you're busy from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., whatever it is, just write down everything that you want to accomplish in that given day. Or even if it's a day where, like yesterday, I had just loafing all day in your house doing nothing watching football whatever it is right Mm -hmm. like just 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 have a plan for yourself every single day and write down what you want to accomplish what's going to be your purpose on this day or at this time and and just execute it because if you're even if you have either too many things to do that it's the point where it overwhelms you then you know, just it, and it, you'll lose focus of what's important and you'll just forget about things. And that's not good, of course. But then if you have nothing to do, then you're going to just lie in bed all day and not make your bed and just be lazy and whatever and just and, and lose sight of, you know, your 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 meaning or your purpose of what you want to do in that given day. So I would say, again, just any 
just always have a plan for every single day. Yeah. Now, in terms of how we're adjusting with our clients or, or how we can stay active. Um, yeah, I would say like, uh, you know, de definitely body weight exercises. Not everyone has equipment. Um, but let me ask you this though, uh, Noam, what are, would you, would you, is there a way to train for progression or do we absolutely have to train for maintenance right now? What would you say? Um, right now, the best bet, because gyms have been closed and a lot of people prefer to work out at gyms, um, people lost a lot of their strength, a lot of their maintenance and a lot of their progression. So right now, the best bet is to maintain, get yourself back to like feeling like you're physically better. You know, you're working out, your body's moving, your muscles aren't like, you know, back to, you know, normal. Um, so I, the best bet I would say is just to maintain for now. Uh, give yourself a, like a month to maintain. After that month, I would say try to start progressing. So increase your sets, increase your reps, maybe increase like a little bit of weight, adding like ankle weights or uh, wrist weights or whatever that might be. Uh, that's what I would say. But for now, for people who have who haven't been to a gym in a long time, I would say try to try to maintain for now. Once you once you feel like you've like maintained enough, go for that progression stage. So that's the best thing I would say right now. But what about also for people that are that are actually trying to lose weight? Like, let's say someone like a client that would usually come to one of us, right? Um, you know, trying to, you know, they, they say, oh, I have to lose 30 pounds or oh, I have to lose 40 pounds or whatever. And typically it's like, okay, we would come up with their with their with their program, we would design their entire program, and we would make a bunch of recommendations from a exercise standpoint and an and a nutrition standpoint, mm -hmm. but let's say right now, those types of people that, you know, we don't have the gyms, we don't have the facilities, I guess, to do exercise from a physical standpoint, but they still want to lose like 40, 50 pounds or whatever it is. And they're very uh, determined to achieve those goals. How would we, how would you recommend, or what would, what plan would you prescribe for them right now? And I'll give my two cents as well after that. Absolutely. Um, what I would suggest mainly is nutrition. So you can lose a lot of weight by just eating well and not really doing much, but obviously it's way better to eat well, but at the same time work out. So my best bet would be eat, make sure they have a good nutrition plan going, make sure they enjoy what they're eating and actually losing the weight by doing that. But at the same time, I would make them just have exercises that increase their heart rate, make them sweat. So more likely hit, but at the same time, not give them too much. So um, you can actually lose or maintain muscle mass by doing like strength exercises or hypertrophy exercises or bodybuilding exercises because that fat burns into muscle or becomes muscle, sorry. And that muscle actually ends up making you look good without you mainly maybe losing weight, but it makes you look good. It makes you look better. And uh, sometimes that weight that you might need to lose uh, can actually just be turned into muscle. You know what I mean? And a lot of people might be looking for that. Um, but yeah, I would say nutrition, hit training to so make you sweat, full body training, because it's better to do like full body rather than one day upper body, another day lower body, you know what I'm saying? And uh, just a little bit of cardio, um, because I, I don't know why people always say this, but cardio isn't the number one thing to lose weight. Um, and I don't know if, if you if you think that way too, but I've been reading a lot of information and a lot of um, uh, studies that running and cardio isn't the best way to lose weight. So there's obviously different things. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I completely agree. I mean, definitely now, now is the time to really focus on your nutrition. Mm -hmm. Although then again, now is also a time where the, that focus on nutrition might become more and more difficult because if you're stuck in your home and working from home, you'll be more likely to grab your cookies, your snacks from your, from your uh, pantries and whatnot. But exactly. I would say from a nutrition standpoint to restrain yourself is just don't buy that junk. Don't yeah. buy it. Like if it ain't there, you ain't going to eat it. So yeah, that's, that that's my, exactly. So that's my suggestion. And look, do I have treats every now and then? Like for me, it's the sugars that, that, that I, that I find myself craving, even like just what, even if it's like a fruit or, or just anything after like a lunch or a dinner, I find the need to have something 
like sweet but here's the thing i'll make sure that it's like a very light type of you know compliments popsicle type of thing like after lunch and i won't have it immediately before bed so yeah. you know if it's a little like a light type of thing sure but you don't want to have like you know those costco cookies filling up your storage closets or your pantries um but yeah just definitely that focus on nutrition right now now is the time to make sure that you know you want to have a moderate a minor caloric restriction if you're losing weight of course you don't want to make it too extreme because if it is then that's how you know you're going to you're going to lose a lot of weight fast sure but then as soon as you stop that diet you're going to gain it all back so just moderate chain moderate deficient sorry moderate deficits uh calorically so that's like eat let's say 200 calories less for two weeks and then drop it gradually. But here's the thing. You mentioned cardio also. I do want to talk about that. So my take on cardio, if in case you're wondering, is absolutely running is the word is actually a bad thing if you're trying to lose weight. Let's be very clear on that. I think, and yeah, you're giving me a thumbs up. So you agree with that as well, because here's what the problem with running and with cardio, because cardio, when you're training to lose weight, if you're not in condition to use fat as an energy source, you're not going to burn it off. So because your body is easier for your body to burn off carbs and sugars versus fat. So what's going to happen is that you're actually by doing high, high intensity cardio, right? You're like, and I'm talking like pure cardio of running or, or, or like, or cycling or sprinting, just like really high intensity cardio that that's, you know, you're taking from your, your sugars, your carbohydrates, but you're not burning off your fat. But if you're at a moderate intensity or like a low to moderate intensity, you are able to burn off fat easier. But the idea is as you get more and more fit, you'll be able to burn fat at higher intensities. So kind of based on what you're saying there, you want to maintain and build your muscle through basic or simple body weight exercises for now, with, which is what you, you know, based on what you can do uh, or mm -hmm. what you have, I'm saying equipment, equipment wise, but in terms mm -hmm. of, in terms of uh, cardio, do not do exclusively high intensity running, high intensity cycling, high intensity yeah rowing, not a good idea because you'll just burn off sugars and even maybe muscle and not burn fat. And that's why so many people, part of extreme diet restriction, extreme cardio, they lose a lot of weight, which isn't all entirely fat, but then they gain it all back as soon as they stop. So that's one of the biggest uh, points that I want to make in terms of what you said. Uh, but here, I've been meaning to ask you this other question now. And again, I'll give my two cents as well. So what what are your favorite exercises to do without the use of any equipment? Yeah. So my go-to, just give me one second, uh, is that my favorite bodyweight exercises ideally is literally my push-ups. My go-to is push-ups. From my that push-up, I go into a burpee because it just like gets my heart rate going, makes me feel good, gets my gets my fitness going, and everything like that. Actually, actually also gets me really hyper. So that's one of my favorite things. The burpees from there, it's the um, leg raises for abs specifically. From there, I like to do um, my sumo squats. I'll tell you why. So my sumo squats are number one because not only do they work on your legs, but they also work on your glutes, your inner thighs, your outer thighs, your quads, and a little bit of the hamstrings. So that's one of my favorites because there's not really much you got to like really do. You just do this one exercise and you get basically all of your legs worked. Um, and the next thing I would say is to just literally, um, do a plank because you can gradually increase that with time. And it's, it's a good thing for you guys to do that because it actually keeps you motivated because you have a goal. And after that goal is set, you can make another goal and another goal and another goal. And it's very similar to what Mike said earlier. So plan it out, make sure you got it and, uh, make sure you got, you got your favorite exercises going. For sure. And, and like you said, you could always go to Noam's page at Live Off Fitness. I'm sure you got a whole <laughs> bunch of body weight exercises and stuff you could do there. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I would, I would actually say more of a focus on uh, core stability exercises. What I mean by that is like a plank, perfect example. But also, um, I always talk about with my clients how, how core movement exercises, crunches, even leg raises to some extent, but leg raises, they target lower abs specifically. And a lot of people are weak in their lower abs. And it's also a little bit of a stretch for for, for your lower back, especially if you come really high up. So not so much leg raises, but I'm talking about people that want to try to get abs doing sit-ups and crunches all the time, every day of their life. Right. It's, yeah. 
it, it'll it'll work at the beginning. Like you'll see some change at the beginning, but here's the thing: your core, your abs, your 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 obliques, your lower back, their primary role is to stabilize you. And if they're not strong as a stabilizer, well, then your squat, your push up, your your any type of your burpee, any type of complex exercise will not work. Will just be not effective for you and almost detrimental to you because you'll you're relying on things on muscles that should not be stabilizing you to stabilize you. So core stability exercises like I, my, one of my favorites you go in a push-up position and you just hold a shoulder tap for three seconds on each side bring your one hand to your opposite shoulder hold that three seconds and alternate about 20 times because that forces you to really train your your abs to hold yourself up in a position of imbalance because if you're on th- on three limbs instead of all four you're a little bit imbalanced there and you have to use your abs to stabilize yourself and so definitely mix in the leg raises like you said but also mix in core stability exercises exactly. with with your with your with your crunches and and your and your ab- yeah. and any type of yeah crunches and even plank or or, or sit-ups or whatever else type of movement exercises that you do for your abs so and, and, um, and mike just just yeah. to add on to you just for so sure can, to for sure agree to you yes actually i've noticed a lot of people they they think core and abs are the same thing but they're actually completely different i've had people telling me oh is my core my abs i'm like no 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 your core is actually from your torso all the way around you know what i mean right below the nipple line where your abs are where your obliques are and as you said where your lower back is that is literally your core when people say work on your abs or squeeze your abs, they just mean your abs. They doesn't mean your back or your obliques. So the one thing I would say is core stability is so important because you can actually use your core and strengthen your core by doing almost any exercise possible. When you're just literally doing bicep curls, your legs are shoulder width apart, you're squeezing your abs, your back, you're keeping your body straight and you're squeezing every muscle. So that's also working on your core as well, man. So I absolutely wanted to reiterate that and just say people need to realize abs and core are different, like Mike said. (laughs) <laughs> yes. I mean, they're, they're within each other, but they're, we're talking about two different things when we're talking exactly. about them separately. So anyway, so we have a couple of, a uh, couple of minutes left here. Noam, thank you again so much for joining the show today. Uh, just I want to end, I think we've said a little bit of this before, but just let's end with one, with your one statement for everyone, just again, coping mentally, coping physically with being locked down again, just give me one statement of advice for people to, to stay active and to, to, to stay healthy mentally, obviously, of course, without, you know, being smart, social distancing, not getting COVID and staying home ideally, but yeah, just give me one statement to stay active and to stay mentally healthy for those listening. This is all temporary. Remember you go back to normal very soon keep pushing, keep fighting, start new things, try new things. And believe me, you'll be successful no matter what people don't give up on yourselves. Keep pushing. It's all temporary. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's hope it's temporary. I mean, I hear like the, the best hope right now is the vaccine. I mean, who knows when it will come out, but hopefully by 2021, we'll be a little bit more back to normal, but, uh, but yeah, again, Noam, thank you so much for joining again. You could follow Noam on Instagram, on Facebook, look him up, live off fitness or live off fitness.com is his website. And obviously if you enjoy our content here at Langer at the mic, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can follow us on Spotify. Spotify and Apple podcasts and be sure to give a big thumbs up on this video. And and especially if you want to have more special guests like Noam Gorelick here, of course. And uh, this has been a Langer at the mic special. Thank you for watching and see you again next time. Mike's the best.